If you're someone who is planning to apply to Norway soon or in the future, this is the right video for you because today I will be talking about the steps na need mong gawin at saka mga requirements that you would need to complete to be able to apply for a tourist at saka visit visa. The first step that you would need to do is to make sure to determine what visa category will match the purpose of your visit. If you are going Going to Norway purely tourism, wala kang kakilalang taga Norway, as in magtutur ka lang talaga, then you can apply for a tourist visa. Now, if you know someone from Norway who is living, working in Norway na ini-invite ka, then that is the time that you will be applying for a visit visa. Now, when it comes to Norway, um, there are certain um, categories under visit visa. Meaning, kailangan mong i-determine or kailangan mong i-check sino ba talaga yung i-visit mo. For, um, for example, si boyfriend eh, or si girlfriend, then you would need to um, check the visit boyfriend or girlfriend visa requirements. So, ito yung mga um, category or yung mga option depende kung ano yung magmamatch sa purpose mo for visit visa. So, they have um, visit boyfriend and girlfriend, um, visit brother or sister, visit daughter or son, visit mother or father, and lastly is visit other relatives or friends. So, again, based kung sino yung ibibisit mo, yun yung pipiliin mo kasi may specific um, requirements under those um, options. The second step is for you to register your application online. Here, you will need to create an account to the application portal. I will create a separate video kung paano gumawa ng account to this portal and paano sagutin yung mga question doon. So, for that, yeah, I will just provide you the website of the UDI portal. Also, sa pag-create ng account na yun, magbabayad kayo. May babayaran kayong necessary fee. Everything will be included sa separate video na gagawin ko regarding that. Now, we proceed sa step 3 which is to request a um, appointment sa BFS Norway. So, with that, um, you need to go to a different website, B B BFS um, Norway. I will have, again, the link in the description below. So, don't magkikreate ka again ng another account to be able to request an appointment. So, there will be two accounts that you would need to create. The first one is the portal, like I mentioned earlier, and the second account will be the BFS account so that you can request an appointment. If you are having a hard time or hindi mo alam kung paano gumawa ng account or kung paano mag-set ng appointment with BFS, I made a, uh, a video regarding that and I was able to show you mga steps that you would need to do. So for that, please do visit my previous video on how you can book an appointment with BFS so it will make it easier. Now, we go to the fourth step step which is um, you would now need to complete all the requirement under the visa category or yung visa checklist na pinili mo. So make sure na makumpleto nyo lahat ng requirements dun sa checklist. But guys, there are times, actually most of the time, there are requirements that is not in the requirement checklist. May mga additional requirements na kailangan mong isubmit. Ito yung mga supporting na lang just to make your application have more chance on getting approved. So the first requirement is yung uh, online visa application form and cover letter from the UDI portal. Ito yung sinabi ko kanina na na um, account kaya magagawa kayo ng account is doon din kayo magsasagot ng application nyo and nagka-create din sila ng cover letter and then may babayaran din kayo doon na visa fee. Even though they have a they already have a cover letter from that portal, I still um, highly, highly, highly suggest that you make your own cover letter. Since yung um, cover letter na pinaprovide from the UDI portal is hindi siya ganun ka-detailed. Hindi niya mai nakasulat lahat ng mga explanation na meron ka. Again, if you need help with your cover letter, if you don't know what to write in it, kung ano yung dapat laman ng cover letter nyo, I made a, a separate video regarding the steps and uh, ano yung mga dapat laman ng cover letter. So, please watch that in the 
link up here or you can also message me directly if you need help because I do provide a service na nagagawa ako ng mga cover letter. So yeah, just message me directly, either email me or in my Facebook. Now, the third requirements is a two current passport. Picture should taken within the last six months. If you wanted to know the uh, requirements para dun sa picture, it's in the website of the embassy. The next requirement is a or, your original passport at saka yung photocopy ng bio page. Bio page means yung um, front page kung nasaan yung details nyo at saka pictures nyo dun sa passport. And then, um, beside the bio page, kailangan yung i-photocopy lahat ng travel stamp or previous visa that is in your passport. And then, the next requirement is a flight itinerary reservation with dates and flight numbers, specifically entry and exit from Norway. Or, I mean, the embassy do not recommend na bumili ka na ng totoong, na totoong ticket because wala namang assurance na mabibigyan ka agad ng visa. That is why they only require na mag-reserve ka. Uh, they only advise that you either reserve a uh, plane ticket uh, with that, you can use a dummy ticket. Everything na related to dummy ticket is in my video up here. Also, that is something you can avail in my website if you do need one. And then, we go to the next standard requirement, which is a complete um, travel or day-to-day -day itinerary. For a tourist visa, this is very important because they need to know kung ano yung mga activities that you're planning to do in Norway. Um, places you wanted to visit and then yung hotel kung nasan kayo. So yeah, day-to-day -day itinerary. Guys, even you're applying for a visit visa, again, you need to make a travel itinerary kasi the embassy need to know what are your plans during your visit to your partner. And again guys, you don't really need to follow the itinerary. This is for uh, visa purpose only. If ever your visa, let's say, was approved, and then you can do whatever you want once you're in Norway. You can also visit some other Schengen countries that is not listed in your um, travel itinerary. Because again, like I said, this is only for visa purposes that you need to convince ang embassy na ito talaga yung gusto mong gawin. So, we go to the next requirement, which is you would need to have a travel visa insurance. Uh, the travel insurance should be accredited by Norway. Uh, but best to be accredited by the whole Schengen countries. I would advise that you get uh, insurance with AXA, Standard Insurance, or Pacific Cross. This insurance provider do issue a refund if ever your visa application get denied. Now, if you have other prepared uh, insurance provider, that's still fine. Basta i-check nyo kung accredited sila ng Schengen countries. And please do ask before you purchase if the insurance can be refunded if your visa application get denied. In this way, may babalik na pera sa inyo. At least, hindi masasayang lahat ng pera na ginastos nyo during the application. And then, we go to the next requirement, which is your proof of accommodation. For those of you that is applying for a tourist visa, what you can use is a hotel booking, hostel, Airbnb, or apartment rental. If you need suggestion where to book, uh, I would advise to have it sa booking.com kasi sa kanila, uh, pwede kang mag-book ng hotel without paying for it agad-agad. You can reserve it without using or providing your card details. So, in this way, ma masusure ka na kahit madina yung visa application mo, hindi ka agad charge. Pero meron kang reserve booking. I heard also Agoda also do the same na pwede kang mag-book ng hotel without paying for it. So, please do use or look at those um, website. And now for those of you applying for a visit visa, of course, like I said, hindi ka makakapag-apply ng visit visa if wala kang inviting person. So, uh, you would, number one, need to have an inviting person that is going to give you an invitation letter. 
So, in the invitation letter, kailangan i-indicate ni host yung exact address niya. Why is he or she is inviting you? Ano yung relationship niyo? Um, ano yung duration ng travel mo? And make sure that your invitee will um, attach some supporting documents para mapakita yung relationship mo dun sa inviting person mo. Then, we go to the next requirement which is the proof of financial means. So, for this, kailangan mo magpakita ng bank account or certificate together with your bank statement for the latest six months. Pwedeng hindi six months, pwedeng umabot ng one year if depende sa iyo yan. Um, for the bank certificate, please always make sure to have this kasi yung iba nagkakamali ng intindi na pag merong bank statement, okay na walang bank certificate. The bank certificate is a certificate that you need to request to your bank as to prove na meron ka talagang account sa kanila at meron ang um, gantong amount or specific amount currently sa bank account mo. Meron yung stamp and signature, signature ng official dun sa banko just to prove na talagang totoong merong account ka sa kanila. Now, um, if nalimutan mong mag-request ng bank statement, if you have a bank book, pwede rin po yun. Pwede mo siyang i-print. Basta, basta yung bank book is updated. So, piliin nyo yung recent 6 month and just Xerox or photocopy nyo yun and then that's good to go. Let's say you don't have your own bank account or you have your own bank account pero you don't have enough money to support your own travel expenses. That is still fine if you will be able to have a sponsor. Ang sponsor po is someone who is willingly uh, going to support all your travel expenses during your trip to Norway. So, make sure that the uh, sponsor is related sa you because if you cannot prove your relationship to the sponsor, pwedeng ma-invalid yung uh, sponsorship. So, make sure na related ka kay sponsor and make sure that you have um, the following supporting documents. The first one is a proof of sponsorship or yung UDI guaranteed form. So, you can download this in the link that I will provide in the description below. And then, make sure to request a scan copy of the passport and copy of Norwegian ID card or resident ID card ni sponsor. And then make sure to have an original affidavit of support legalized by the Norwegian municipality where your sponsor is registered. And then of course, make sure to request a recent proof of income ni sponsor. Pwede doon is yung 3 months recent payslip nila. If si sponsor is walang trabaho and wala siyang mapapakitang payslip, ang pwede niya pong ipakita is 6 month recent um, bank, banking statement. Now, if si sponsor mo is hindi nagtatrabaho, um, pensionado na siya, uh, then pwede pa rin po basta magpapakita si sponsor ng um, pension 6 month recent pension statement. Now, the last supporting document from the sponsor is yung proof that you're in a relationship. Pwede dito is yung birth or marriage certificate if your sponsor is a family member. If it's your partner, please make sure to provide um, pictures together. The more picture you have, the better. Um, screenshot ng mga chat conversation nyo, call logs, email, anything na magpapakita that you have communication and relationship with this person. That will be useful. Or, if you are someone naman na a student and you don't have your own money and you don't have your own bank account but your uh, parents is willing to sponsor your trip, then ang ipapakita nyo is a bank account statement ni mommy at ni daddy plus a sponsorship letter from them. Yun yung mga supporting documents from the sponsor. Now, if you wanted to know more uh, about the requirements or kung ano yung mga dapat nyo gawin to apply with a sponsor. I did made a video about that. But I will have the link here so you can just watch that. And then we go to the next requirement which is your proof of family ties. is for a marriage certificate, senumar, birth certificate. If you have a partner na namatay, then death certificate. So anything lang na magpapakita that y yung status mo sa Philippines. The next requirement is your proof of strong ties or yung proof of will of return. Meaning, ito yung reason kung bakit babalik ka ng Pilipinas. 
Ang uh, higpit ang Norway dito, hindi lang Norway actually sa lahat ng embassy, they always require the applicant to have a strong ties. This will be uh, something that you can use as proof to the embassy na meron kang reason para bumalik ng Pilipinas at meron ka talagang babalikan sa Pilipinas. So, um, there are a lot of things na pwede mong gamitin sa strong ties. Hindi ko na siya i-mention dito, but recently I created a video uh, options, a lot of options for you to choose from. Baka naman kasi meron ka talagang strong ties na pwedeng gamitin. Hindi mo lang alam na pwede mo palang gamitin. So, with that, to make it clear for you, please watch my previous video recently ko lang yun ginawa so it will be uh, helpful in your case the last standard requirement is yung evidence of employment status mod so this is for those of you that is employed or self-employed if you're a student so for uh, applicants who is employed please make sure to provide a COE a current bank statement for the last six months, a payslip from the last three months, leave permission from your employer, which is very important if hindi ka iya allow ng employer mo or ng boss mo na magbakasyon. Baka hindi ka rin payagan ng embassy. So please do request a approved leave of absence or no objection letter from your boss. And then, um, you would also need to show a income tax return or yung tinatawag nating ITR. If you are someone who don't have ITR, make sure to explain in your cover letter the reason why you don't have one. To those of you that is self-employed, make sure to provide the following requirements. Um, DTI or yung business license nyo. Um, mayors or barangay business permit. And then, um, income tax return again and BIR. And then, Company bank statement, if you have a small business lang naman, like sari-sari store, laundry shop, coffee shop, na hindi naman kayo nag-open ng separate bank account, but you're um, depositing your income sa sariling bank account nyo, then that is still fine. And lastly, for those of you that is a student, uh, make sure to provide your proof of enrollment, approved letter of absent from your school or university, and then a photocopy of your school ID. If you will be applying during um, school vacation, then you don't need to show a proof of enrollment or yung approved leave of absent from your university. Pero kailangan mo magpakita ng proof of enrollment for the next school year or yung, yeah, yung pagpasok mo once na makabalik ka na after ng trip mo to Europe. So yeah guys, those are the standard requirements. There might, oh no, actually there are some requirements that I did not mention here. Kasi um, you need to check that dun sa um, requirement checklist. Let's say, okay na, nakompleto mo na lahat ng requirements as in ready ready ka na. So now we go to the next step which is um, going to the BFS to submit your visa application. So, during your application, um, kukunan ka nila ng biometrics, ng picture, ng fingerprint. They might ask you few questions, two to three um, questions. Parang small interview lang siya. So, doon nyo siya gagawin. And then, let's say, na, uh, napasa nyo na yung requirements nyo, um, make sure to pay yung iba pang mga additional fee, yung mga extra service fee. So, if you wanted to know kung ano yung mga extra services na in offer sa BFS Norway na pwede nyo i-avail, I will have uh, a link uh, in the description ko ano yung mga yon. And then, after that, just go home, wait for the result, and pray, 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 pray a lot na sana maganda ang result nyo. And then, uh, normal visa processing is 15 days. Please wag masyadong excited if one week wala pa yung result nyo. It may take time, depende kung gano kadami yung applicant nyo. Now, if inabot ng one month, wala pa rin yung result, it's still normal. Ganun talaga, guys. Kasi nga, madaming nag apply ng visa. If ever you receive a message na okay na yung passport nyo, meron na kayong result, then all you need to do is get that passport. Either you go back to the BFS or just receive it at home. So, yeah. Yun na lahat ng steps and requirements. And I hope that you guys find this video helpful and I hope that you understand lahat ng mga in-explain ko. So yeah guys, if there is something confusing or meron pa rin kayang nalilito or gusto nyong itanong sa akin, you can have that in the um, comment section below. Please feel free to ask me anything. And guys, please do support my Facebook group. Um, I will have a link 
in the description below. Please join that. And maraming nag-share ng mga experience nila. Also, dun ako nagpo-post ng mga tips and active ako sa, face uh, sa Facebook group ko. If you do like this video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you're new and you're not yet a subscriber, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button at that bell button para maging updated pa sa mga upcoming ko pang mga video. And I will see you soon. Bye!